Hey everybody, this is Perch. Uh, there's a couple YA novels coming out from DC that we got some more information on. And this is a case where you're probably going to see a lot of videos on this, but I, I think that it's, it's hard to kind of wrap your head around exactly what's happening. But at any rate, uh, the first is a book called I Am Not Starfire. It's written by Mariko Tamaki. She's, of course, on Wonder Woman. This was announced um, over a year ago, but we finally have a release date of August of 2021. And the basic premise of this story goes like this. Uh, this is a story about Mandy, the daughter of the super famous superhero Starfire and her attempts to get out from under her shadow. Uh, it is, you know, she is Mandy is not her mother, daughter of Starfire and a high school outcast. Mandy is constantly trying to get out from under the shadow of her bright, bubbly, scantily clad, famous mother. She dyes her bright orange hair black. She sticks close to her best friend, Lincoln, and she spends her days at school avoiding Teen Titans super fans and hiding her feelings for her gorgeous, popular, perfect Claire. Um, while Mandy usually avoids spending too much time with her alien mother, she's particularly quiet as she's keeping a major secret from her that she walked out of the SAT. So it's, it's basically Mandy is a... Um, you know, reasonably overweight, a goth, uh, lesbian who is uh, hiding the fact that she doesn't like school. She wants to move to Paris. And uh, her daughter is a super popular celebrity uh, superhero. The other comic that's out is uh, a Poison Ivy book. And in this one, it's, it's a little bit of a different uh, spin on it. This is a kind of a gothic hero Gothic horror anti-hero, uh, original graphic novel, YA book. And in this one, um, Pamela Isley is, uh, you know, the girl who hides behind her bright red hair. She won't let anyone inside to see what's lurking behind the curtains. Everybody always wants something from her. But when cute, cute goth girl Alice O comes into Pamela's life after an accident at the local park, it makes her feel like pulling back the curtains and letting the sunshine in. So, um, and it, you know, will Ivy open herself up to love? Will she be transformed by the thorny vines of revenge, etc.? So, so we have both of these books, which are offering different takes of superheroes. In one case, Poison Ivy. In the other case, um, this this new kind of daughter that was invented for Star. Who's a dad? By the way, I, I guess it doesn't matter. Um, and it, it, it all, so, the, you know, as you, you see this and a lot of people, there's going to be a lot of hot take videos about all this because, um, you've got this, this really bizarre looking, um, stylized, uh, you know, shorter daughter, uh, you know, it, they always, it, by the way, they, they, it feels like there's like two templates for characters. They always have like the, the super kind of mildly surly, you know, hand on hip, overweight nose ring. It, it's, it's. For a, for an industry that prides itself on being creative and doing new things, there's a remarkable amount of not new things, and I guess that's what gets gets me about all this. The, you know this this push into YA because what's weird is that if you take the time and you actually look up these writers, you know Mariko Tamaki, what she has done, the Poison Ivy is being uh, written by uh, Cody Keplinger, who uh, she got well known for doing a book called The Duff which was back in 2010, so t to 10 years ago. And I mean, I'll just say it this way. Nobody knows what the hell they're doing in, in young adult right now. And what's weird is I don't think they're remotely coming close to hitting their audience. You know, some of these authors do have uh, some best-selling books under their belt, but it's, it's, not a, it's not a massive success. And there's, there is just tons of them being vomited out on a regular basis. And, and most of them are not landing. You know, the, the big publishers kind of went all in about two years ago, maybe a little bit more further back than that with wanting to produce YA, but the, the vast it's, it's like a volume play. It's like what Marvel does on a monthly basis on crack. There's just, there's so many of these books being shoved out into the market. Very few of them find an audience. And so now we're watching DC and Marvel and kind of the comic companies saying, well, we want a piece of that. Let's play with it. So they commission these books, but they feel like the remnant ideas of these authors that in many cases are not the top of their industry. Some of them are have some best-selling credits to their name. I mean, again, you know, Keplinger has the Duff was a, was a very high selling book, but that was 10 years ago. And, has, you know, Cody, there's continued to be. Um, more books. Uh, she's continued to put out a lot in the years that have followed, but but it is it, the the formula is starting to wear very thin. And then where 
DC is concerned, there seems to be a, a real fixation on, you know, not you, you were going to do YA, but we're also going to ingest uh, LGBTQ type concepts in there as well. And we're going to deal with some body issues. And it's like, it's, it's like, you know, I don't know if, if this is an old person thing, but there's, there's this concept of Mad Libs where you have a story written out and you just, you enter like a name and a type of food and an adjective and some other things. And you make a story. This is something they, they give to kids to kind of teach them how to write stories. Um, it's not very fun, but these books really come across that way. They come across like it is kind of the same. Even looking at the Poison Ivy one compared to the Starfire one, it's the same kind of story. It is, here's a character and, uh, you know, she's, you know, there, there's a, there's a woman that comes into their life. They're crushing on this girl and, oh, it, it works. And, and then, uh, they, it starts to open up new horizons and they, they kind of break out of their dark, you know, shadowy life. And, and, and it just, it's, these are all billed as a coming of age story, but the question is, I don't think these are coming of age stories that anyone seriously wants to read. We've seen several of these graphic novels come out. Um, there's a whole imprint that Mariko Tamaki is, is spearheading now, uh, for a line called Shirley books, which is premiering here in a couple months. Uh, that is going to be a, a large number of graphic novels, all aimed at coming of age, YA LGBTQIA community. And it's, there's, well, I mean, I'll just put it this way. There's not enough market for this bluntly. There's just not enough, um, interest in all these books. There's not enough money to do all this bluntly. I mean, and I'm, I'm not saying this is an opinion. Uh, this, this actually transcends whether you like this content, you don't like this content, you know, do you like watching, do you like, the idea of an overweight daughter of Starfire wearing Doc Martens, I, 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 you know, that that's up to you. But regardless of all that, uh, there's just there's not enough money in this business. There, there, and and the the vast majority is factually the vast majority of these books uh, die a really quick death in in shops. They're they're not finding an audience. And it's, it's weird. Uh, there's so many weird things about this. It's weird that, that comic publishers are choosing to go for a niche of a niche. Now I get you, you know, you want to put out some LGBTQ books. That's fine. It's, it's your, it's your, your party, it's your money, but your YA approach is very heavy in that direction. It's, it's way more than 50% of the books you're, you're putting out are targeting that group just by sheer math that's that's not going to work that's you're, you're you're producing well in excess of what the market will take and then in addition to that you have the whole problem of you have established characters you have a bruce wayne you have a starfire you have all you have all these characters that you've established in some cases for decades and decades and decades and then you're going to reimagine them for ya so in doing so what you're doing is actually you're you're making you're, you're doing more work for yourself you're saying that you, you not only are you putting out a book um, that is a niche audience within a niche audience, and you're reimagining the character. So any benefit you might get from like a parent who maybe grew up with Batman wanting to give their their kid the YA version of this book, you're you're making it difficult for that parent to do that because the book they're giving them is not the character they know. Now, please don't misinterpret my argument that you have to keep everything the same and you can't ever reimagine anything. And, and I'm also not saying you shouldn't be doing LGBTQ books. Of course you should. You could do whatever you want. But you are, there. there's, I guess this is a business statement. There is not enough business to do this. And it is, the market isn't here. The, the market just flatly isn't here. And it's, it, you know, I, you know, the, the old saying, if you, if something fails, try, try again, you know, if it doesn't work once, try, try again. This is like DC has been trying and trying again a lot. These books are not landing with people. And meanwhile, you have Scholastic and you have others owning this market and getting more and more market share while the comic publishers, DC in particular, and, and, and it, to some extent, Marvel and others, they're not, they're not keeping up. And I, in many ways, I, I mean, I guess they're just trying to find their corner, their their niche. They're trying to own one category, but you're not going to do that with 
overweight teen daughter of Starfire, who's a goth girl with a crush on a gorgeous, popular, perfect Claire. It's just that that's not you're not going to it's not going to work. Um, now, maybe I'm wrong. And by the way, I will absolutely come on the channel and say I was completely wrong. This title sold great. It's wonderful. Look at this. It's it's DC's top selling book for 2021. It's amazing. Uh, I will admit it. But I, I've said this for the last year and a half. I've pointed out these very weird approaches they've taken with YA. And I've said uh, these aren't going to work. And usually there's at least one person in the comments who comes in and tells me, oh, you can't. You don't know that for sure. I'm like, you're, you're right. I'm, I'm just reading, you know, reading the lines, reading what's happening. And it it doesn't work over and over. It doesn't work. And I'm not a dick about it. I don't go in and then like chase down the people in the comments. But like, hey, look at this. Here are the numbers. It failed. But what what are you going to do? I mean, it. this is such a strange approach. Because in theory, these are, this is your next generation of readers who's going to come in and, you know, read these books and then want to go into comics. But, you know, we, a lot of, uh, there's a lot of videos talking about, well, this is DC trying to indoctrinate kids and all the rest, but nobody's buying it. They're, they're indoctrinating nobody because nobody is buying it. It's not, it's not working. These, these books are not selling. And it feels like the only people who get super excited about this are the Bleeding Cools and the Newsaramas and others that, that gleefully like run these stories. And you'll see lots of smiling pictures of, uh, usually not smiling, of, of Tamaki kind of, you know, scowling at the camera and like, yeah, you know, I've got this line of books that I'm doing. And it's, it's like everybody's pretending that this is all successful, but none of it is successful. This is, this is not working. And what's weird about it, and this is the fair aspect of it, Tamaki is putting out a, a reasonably solid Wonder Woman run right now that is selling and is actually getting some attention and is is working. Um, but we're focusing on this stuff. It, 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 it It's like we're living in backwards world. And, and, and again, I'll say it for the third time. I'm not saying you shouldn't do LGBTQ books. I'm not saying you shouldn't do YA books. I'm not, but you, you should try and be successful, right? This, this stuff is not breaking ground. And I know the argument of, well, even if it's not successful, it, it breaks a barrier just to do it. No, it doesn't. Not, not, not when it's like the 30th attempt and it, it, it's, it's, it's not, you're not, you're not making any ground up. I don't know. Uh, does anybody want to read about the God, and, and by the way, I'm just have to say it. So as part of the solicitation, they say that, you know, the, the daughter Mandy, um, is trying to, is embarrassed, you know, by her scantily clad mother. And then she's wearing, I don't know what the F this is that, I mean, it just, just what, what, what are you doing? I mean, <laughs> what, 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 what are you doing? I, this, this is, this, this feels like, uh, I, I don't know. It, it feels like a practical joke. It does not. It does not feel like somebody seriously who wants to go and own the market. And I think you you do want to own the market, right? I, I guess. I, I don't know. It's very odd. Anyway, uh, that's that's what we've got. And there's more YA books on the horizon. There are dozens and dozens. I mean, you cannot throw a rock on Twitter without hitting somebody who announces that they've got a YA deal or a writer who's talking about how excited they are about doing a new queer approach on, you know, the Riddler or just some random character. I mean, I, and, and I guess these things are going to keep coming out and it's fine, but at, at some point they need to find an audience like any audience. Um, and maybe again, I will come on and I will say I am wrong if this title takes off, but nothing in this indicates it's going to, to take off. Uh, I mean, I hope for DC's sake it does. It's a lot of work. But I, I, what do you think? Are you going to buy this? Are you going to buy this for your kids? If you have kids, are you, uh, you know, are you the YA market that's going on? I mean, help, help me out. Seriously, I, I'm not. I'm tr really trying to understand what what's going on here because this is not something that is going to to do well. I just, you know, and, and I, you can say, ah, how do you know that? It hasn't come out yet. You're right. You're right. Um, it, this may be, this may do great, but probably not. I mean, again, if the last 12 attempts are any indication, probably not. But 
Try, try again, right? Hey, uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Like, subscribe, click the bell for notifications. Most importantly, and as always, thanks for listening.